another rainy day. Yet another rainy day. What a surprise here in the rainy season. Not sure how much longer this is going to last. Good morning, gang. Hello, hello, hello. You know what we will be doing today. And for the next little while, <laughs> we're back on, back on track. Back on track. It's a busy morning today. There's lots of stuff to, to do and talk and show. And man, are we busy here. We did our inventory yesterday, as in counting all the prints and sheets of paper and wood blocks and stuff. And everybody else has gone home. And my job now is to put it all together and uh, bank reconciliation and all this kind of stuff. So. Okay, 8 o'clock. Paper is out. Yes, two packs are out. Thank you very much. I know just after 6 o'clock I got up there and got them out. Today, uh, Yumi-san is here. She's working on uh, number 8. She's working on the August print. So is Ishikasa. They're both working on the August print. It's looking good. And there's another there's another Easter egg in it, which I myself hadn't known about until it leaked. I heard a conversation upstairs and then thought, wait a minute, what's going on? And there's another Easter egg in this print. I hope Jed isn't listening. We didn't count the Kozo branches physically because I know we, they're still there from, from December and we haven't touched them since December. So in that kind of case, it's just height check, same as last time. The things we have to physically count are the things that change all the time. The sheets of cardboard, sheets of washi, the prints in the shop, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, right. So. Okay, okay, okay. We, you know what we're going to be? We're going to be carving this morning. But before I do, I know we have a, a show and tell at the end of the stream. A package arrived just a few minutes after the last stream. I hadn't known it was coming. I had mixed feelings about trying to show it to you, but I kept it here. I haven't opened it yet, actually. And uh, we will open it at the end of the stream. And it is the biggest, physically the biggest show and tell we have ever had here. I'm not going to be able to do it at my desk. When it comes time, I'm going to have to stand up, point the camera down the room, and I'll walk down there and just open it. And you guys can have to sit here and talk about it and stuff like that. Then after I've opened it, I'll come back here and maybe we can talk about it. The physically largest show and tell we've ever had. But before that, there is this, another package arrived yesterday, which I should show you. This is not officially show and tell, but you will be interested in this. Just take a few minutes here. You might be able to tell by the dimensions and by the wrapping. This is a surihon, a package of finished prints. Do you remember what's been on the schedules? Do you remember what, uh, what has been cooking for a while? You, you've seen the test of this, I think. Hmm? 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 <laughs> so, you can't go wrong with that guess, right? Even when you're wrong, you're right. So. <laughs> There's so many freaking cat projects going on. You can't go wrong with that guess. Which one though? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? The size gives it away. Yummy is on here. He's on here. Chocolate eggs. The show. Do you remember the name? Two cats in a mountain. No, 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 no. That's that's done. I know. There will be a batch of those coming because uh, no, who's doing that? Sugisan. No, 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 no. Chiharu-san is at the moment doing the two cats in a mountain. She's printing another batch of those. This came from Chiharu-san. Izakiya cats. No, that was done. Her batch of that came just a little while ago. We have moved on. This is the first batch for finished, for sending to Jed, the first batch. You saw the test printing a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, months ago. And this is now the first of the edition. There's 80 copies here, ready to go, ready to go, ready to go. It's Hanami Cats, finally ready to go. After carving and test printing and more recarving and more test printing and more recarving, we are up to go. And 
this batch came again. This is from Chiharu-san. She's the one who's been doing all of our sushi cats printing. Last time, the carving on the sushi cats, the izakaya, that was carved by Chon-san, our carver here from Hong Kong, and printed by Chiharu-san. And this one is carved by Kawasaki-san, our young Japanese carver, in living in Kobe, Kawasaki Noriko. I say young, whatever, yeah, she's a young Japanese carver, whatever. And then we have another one. We have another one to die for. <laughs> I keep saying the same thing, but I'm so happy we were able to publish these, you know. Prints of this quality, publishing them now here in 2020. I mean, it just, it's, this is a fantasy. This just isn't happening. Not everybody's in love with this kind of a design, but you know, I don't care. It is interesting, it's beautiful, it's well done. The fact that it's cats, are we pandering to popular taste? Bring it on, because pandering to popular taste was exactly what the Ukiyo-e prints were all about back then. And while doing so, they made beautiful objects, and I'm happy to be following that tradition. We don't sell these here at Mokohankan. These are all wholesale. These go to Jed. Jed is the person who, who sells these. So if you're interested, it's Ukiyo-e Heroes, all one word, ukiyoeheroes.com. This is not an Ukiyo-e Heroes print. There's no video game relation here, but we're just following on. And I think there's 80 copies here in the first batch. Jed will be numbered. We don't do numbering here. Maybe we're the wholesaler. We're the manufacturer. We make these things. They will now go to Jed. He is going to sign each one with his name. He puts a date on. It'll be whatever, June, July, whenever he gets in July. It'll be July 2002, and he signs when he numbers them. And they're not limited edition numbering. He's going to number them going up and starting at, you know, one, whatever. That's out of my hands completely. But anyway, there they are. I'm not sure if Jed's put him on his website for sale yet already or not. He doesn't know this is here. I will be Skyping him later this morning to show him this. And I will ask him to sit down first before I show him. Can you, from his point of view though, you know, doing designs, G-Clay prints, Photoshop, for getting your own designs made like this in Japan to a level like this. I mean, the guy, the guy, he's died and gone to heaven to show. It just doesn't happen. I told you, this, this isn't, it isn't happening, it's just, it isn't happening. Oh, conversation I'm missing here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was too busy with my own uh, affairs here. Sorry about that. We could make the studio 100% Great Wave. Yep, we could do. We could make a living just making Great Wave prints. I mean, it wouldn't, it's not what we want to do. It's not what the world needs, but we could do that. There are so many orders you heard the music, but no, no thank you. Uh, so, so it's not online yet. He's waiting till he gets them in hand. Okay, all right, good. All right. Okay, we're off to work. Be before you, one, one more quick thing. I know the block is here, ready to work, but a letter came in. The mail finally is going back and forth between us and Spain. Orders from Spain, which have been backed up for three months, have been sent out now, and a letter came in from Spain. Look at this. I have no idea who this is from. I don't recognize the name at all. Look at the cool way to get a letter. Look at this. This person, I guess, has... I'm not sure if they've drawn this whole thing. What have they done here? I can't tell. It looks printed. I don't know. But it's got my address. Is this maybe printed out from a computer? I don't know what it is, but it's from some artist type person. It could be laser printed, I can't really tell. It doesn't look to be hand drawn. I mean, it, no, it doesn't look like it's drawn right on this paper, but there's no dots, there's no half tone dots. I've got no idea. Is it okay to show? Maybe we shouldn't show their address maybe. Marina de la Ramon. I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's have a look inside. 
<laughs> Look at this. This must be their uh, studio mark. Presumably we have an artist type person here. I'm not so sure if I should open mail on a stream. Maybe it's, uh, must be just fan mail, I guess. I don't know. No idea. Or they're sending a print. This person. This is something familiar. I think this person has been here. As in print party. I think this person has been here. Dave struggles to remember here. Oops, what's this? Well, let's have a look at this. Here's the info. Digital, it says digital ukiyo-e style illustration. M. Red Raccoon. Mushu, Mrs. Marina, Marina Red Raccoon. These are rift on old hero skate prints. More cats. Oh, I think that's where I've seen this. Somebody you know, entered in the cat series. I think I've seen something like this in the, you know. Nisen Niju, 2020. Oh, it's a year, no, 2020. Maybe it's a New Year's card. There. Interesting. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> and maybe this per he, she, Marina. Would that be a lady? Marina Red Raccoon. Digital Ukiyo-e Fu Ilast. Digital Ukiyo-e Illustrations. And no actual, as in, letter. Oh, <coughs> details, details. So it is from the workshop. Yes, yes, yes. So somebody who enjoyed doing the print party and is sending this, you know, sending this thank you note. I don't know. I can't connect the name with the face. You know, somebody that was here to do the party. Marina. Marina. We hear the names once. You know, somebody comes in does the party, we're chatting for an hour, two hours, but they say their name once at the beginning before I even sort of know what we're going to be doing or something. And then we don't use names during the sort of, during a, you know, a session or whatever. So I end up not remembering the name of the person. You know, if I saw a picture for something, maybe I'd remember, oh yeah, that lady, we did that that day. But just barely remembering the name, I don't know. Anyway, thank you. If, she, if she's here, thank you very much. I will try in email and drop a note back. I will try. Okay, enough chat. We've already used one quarter of the stream here. Let's number one quarter of it. Let's get some work done. It is quiet outside. It's Saturday when the joint should be jumping, but it's not. We know why it's raining, raining, raining. Okay, let's find the spot. Dave's going to play with some toes. For those of you who weren't here the other day, the thing we're carving right now at the moment, it's an image of two young boys. And what they're doing, they're washing ink stones. There has been a calligraphy session. Their mother or somebody, whatever, has been doing calligraphy, or maybe they've been doing calligraphy. And they are washing the ink stones. In itself, it's not a dramatically interesting image. It's just part of our usual policy. We're trying to make beautiful prints, and the actual theme of the thing inside is really almost irrelevant to me. It doesn't matter. The theme is just an excuse to hang this on, like that one you just saw with the Hanami cats. A couple of cats drinking sake. It doesn't really matter what it's about. 
the thing is about the beauty. Jed would argue, he's an artist, he wants the, the image to be the important part. For me, it's not the image, it's the physical object. That's fine, he gets what he wants, I get what I want. Here's the uh, thing that we're actually, to zoom out again a bit, the, where I got this image is a print by Kiyonaga. I don't have the original Edo era print, of course. I don't even have the real uh, reproduction of the real. It's an Oban type print, about the same size as the, the Great Wave, whatever. And what I do have is a Taisho era woodblock reproduction of it. So, so let me say, a slice of life. Just, so it's just a pleasant, interesting, nice slice of life. And we have this beautifully, gorgeously made Taisho era reproduction. And normally in my work, we take larger prints and I shrink them down to do these postcard size ones. This one, I'm enlarging it because I'm working from the postcard one. We traced this on my iPad and then printed it out and now carving it. So that part of it just right there is basically what the print. Prints, 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 prints. We have too many prints. The binocular microscope, the individual eye focus. Yes, yes, yes. Don't need your glasses. So you can set the focus for each one individually. I'm left eye dominant when, and this is a scope that's left eye dominant. Too interesting. When you do the main focus, it changes both. And if you then want to change one of them, you change the right one. So it's interesting why they should build microscopes for left eyed people. I don't want to talk about that right now. I'll show you. And I'm using it here at its weakest magnification. Zoom back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. In recent uh, weeks, months, whatever, there's been a kind of a flood of these microscopes coming up on auction here. I'm not sure why. Maybe because there's so many companies going bankrupt or something in recent times. There's been a whole bunch of these scopes, you know. They used to cost nearly, whatever, a thousand dollars or so. And now there's so many of them out there, the prices just drop like crazy. You can pick one of these up now for a couple hundred dollars. Here in Japan, I don't know about anywhere else. And I have an alert in the auction system to let me know when one comes up, you know. Just to, just, just to keep in touch with what's going on. And a few weeks ago, a very interesting scope came up. It was the same scope that I have here. So there's no reason for me to think about buying it. But it had an attachment that I wanted. Some guy in Japan patented and then had produced an attachment for the bottom of these scopes that allowed you to get a sideways view of the thing you were looking at. I'm looking down, of course, straight down at the work. This is no problem. It's okay for me to do that. But this was a double, triple, quadruple mirror attachment thing that fits on the bottom of the scope. And it ended up that this, when you looked down inside it, what you ended up seeing was a, a like a 60, 70 degree view sideways onto the thing that was uh, in, in view there. I thought that would really be cool to uh, really be cool to have, so I put it in my uh, alerts. I put it in my watch list, but that one went expensive. It wasn't just me. Other people were thinking, "Ooh, that is cool," and it was indeed cool. And it went for more than I could afford, considering I've already got the scope itself. You know? So one idea was to bid on it, take the attachment, and then sell the scope. You know. But like, we just don't have time to play with stuff like that. But it was cool. I had no idea that such a thing existed. Okay, toes, toenails. As we mentioned today, different toenails and fingernails from what John Amos does. But, uh,
So they're still expensive in the U.S. Soka, they're much, much cheaper now here in Japan. At least my, my from casual perusal of Yahoo auctions, you know. And every day, there's a bunch of them every day now. But you guys out there, people like Karen and stuff like this, I, I really would not recommend that you muck around with this stuff, you know. Uh, for me, at my age now, with my eyes as they are, and the kind of work that we are doing, this super, sometimes stupidly delicate work, it's a thing. But I don't really think most people involved in it, certainly people like Karen out there, just make your art. Don't get hooked on the tiny detail infinitely, oh my God, look how carefully and delicately we can do this. That's, it's cool, but what we really need much more is a whole bunch of flood of interesting pictures, you know. So don't get caught up on the, the super control, tiny detail stuff. You know? Well, whatever, we shouldn't chase this depending on our own personality, but uh, I'd much rather see prints of general interest coming out than, than obsessively compulsive type prints coming out like mine. Do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> Remember, the lasers are coming, you know? I mean, the lasers are here. The lasers are coming. And if we talk about super detailed work, if that's going to be your bag, the lasers are going to catch you real soon. Now, you know? I'm speaking myself as well. You know? And if you think about the where this would go in the future, what value do humans bring to this? It's not going to be the area of super sharp, tiny detail. That's not going to be the human value in any of these prints. The human value is going to be in the taste and the overall feeling and the mood and you know stuff like that. So especially now in 2020, the kind of thing I'm doing here really doesn't fit the era. It's okay for Dave to sit here doing this because that's sort of my bag coming in, coming at this from the old days. But somebody younger getting into this thing now, to focus obsessively on the tiny detail would not, I think, be a sensible way to go. Because you know? the machines are going to kill you on that. I guess I really am a dinosaur in that sense. Now, they funny, I think of myself as being high-tech and hip and futuristic, whatever, but when you do think about it in those terms, I'm the dinosaur here. I'm the guy playing with the stuff that is, uh, you know, out, out of date and done. And speaking about the laser carving, you know, we've got these prints here from the Miyakodori, that Ginza in the rain and stuff like that, that are carved by laser. And already there's other people have jumped into the field. And over there in America, I don't know if this is top secret or not, so I should, yeah, I'll leave names off because this might be something that's not announced yet. But I had a Skype conversation with a friend the other day from America, and he showed me uh, some blocks, photographs, video of some uh, wood blocks for wood block printing carved by laser over there in America. So it's not just the Miyakodori people here. You know that video that Cameron put up the other day on Facebook? That's a Kashiwagi-san here in Japan who's working on this. He's not the only one in the field now. The Americans, uh, there's a, people in America are chasing him. And the level of detail is turning out to be kind of stunning. And once you get to that thing, you know, once you've got, if you've got a good hard piece of wood and turn your laser on and then just go to, go to bed or something, come back and it's done in the morning, there's no doubt about it, that's going to change this, you know. The, pr 
printing is still a thing by hand, hard, high touch. But this looks like the way it might be moving in the next few years. Any carving that needs detailed work is going to be the mechanical and laser carving. And then the people take over for printing. Because the, the thing he showed me showed stunning, stunning detail. So with the beveled cuts, this is the thing I saw in the video yesterday of the laser cutting that's being done in America. It's beveled cuts, beveled cuts. So we're talking about the whole thing, the imperfections. Yeah, of course, I'm not suggesting, you know, I mean, I'm going to keep going. We enjoy what we do and we add value to this. There are people always who will enjoy seeing these kind of things. I'm just saying that if I were starting out, there's Ishikawa-san. Good morning, morning. Ima mite yo, camera de. Her paper is out. I'm not perfect at his carving at all. I'm, I'm good at this, and I've used the skill set and developed the skill set. I'm going to keep on going. But if I were younger, if I were in my 20s, I would have to think is what's the real value we can bring to this, you know? I mean, of course, it's the laser is going to cut it mechanically. I'm going to cut it my own way, the imperfections, blah, blah, blah. But what would be the most useful way to use your life and to develop skills in something? I mean, Casey's over there. He's Casey from, from, from England, on Taransa. And he's just starting his apprenticeship at this carving. And it's okay, we're encouraging him, go for it. He's going to use his time and develop skills and be really happy with that. People will enjoy his products. But I'm not so sure I would start it again myself at a young age if I knew that the machines really could, quote, do it, quote, better, unquote. You know what I mean? It's complicated. It's complicated. Yeah, it's not the same. I understand it's not the same. But, uh... and a part of the background to that, that we have talked about this before, is the, the thing that I hear almost every time this conversation comes up, and we hear this very much, it's the imperfections are what make it human and that sort of thing. You know? I, you know, that's the paradox of what we do here. The stack of prints I just showed you, remember? The, the, the 80 prints of that cat. Our goal is to make them all as perfect as we possibly can. You know, we don't want to see imperfections at all. That's our, our core and main goal. Now, we can't do that. But if we start to think, oh, it's okay, look, it's misregistered a bit. It's okay, it was made by hand. People can understand it's made by hand. That's, that's the end of the game. We don't want to do that at all. So there really are so many paradoxes involved in this, you know. To strive per, for perfection and fail is what maybe gives this thing its whole meaning. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. For me, enough of the philosophy, just it's fun to do this. And it's fun when it's finished and they look so good. And I think, my God, look at that. I did that. I made that, you know. And maybe is that what this is all about, is just that ego thing at the end. Look at what I did, you know. Maybe, maybe.
And that print I just showed you, the Hanami cats, I didn't design it, I didn't carve it, I didn't print it, and yet I'm full of pride. You know, look what I did. <laughs> Waves all day, every day. Okay, but the question is a question of tool use, you know. I mean, we are doing this by hand, but we are using. Tools. Now, how do you define what an acceptable tool is? This tool, I'm going to guide it by hand and cut it. The CNC machine is another tool. It gets to be a pretty vague question of where you draw the line. Does your physical muscle have to push it at every second? Or is building the tool and guiding it part of your skill set that you've put into this thing? The guy that made the guitar, but he's used a CNC to route out a lot of the waste wood, I don't know, I use a big chisel. Am I supposed to stay with small chisels because that's more of a handmade touch? It's very, very fuzzy, you know. Very, very, very fuzzy. John's got another point. We've got these laser carved prints, but what about the design? I mean, that's a whole different story. How much of the reason you might like to take these is because you want that picture, that design, that art, and how much because you want that object. As I said a few minutes ago, you know, for this person here, it's almost irrelevant, the art. Well, yes and no, because I do have, I do have, what's the word, konomi? I do have preferences. The picture we're making here, you know, the, the print that I own, the art, does it matter to me? I don't know. And yet I don't like those two prints that are done on the laser. Same, same comment as John. They're all mixed together. There's no absolutes here. It's all mixed together. But hontani, for me, it's this physical object. And to think that, my God, some guy did that. Some guy made that, you know. And they made it in a really non-pretentious way. I right, one, bang, print one, bang, print one, bang, next, 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 time for lunch. What's happening after lunch? Let's do some more. Just skilled men. Oh, I got it out to look at the toenail. <laughs> I can't keep something in mind for more than 10 seconds at a time. I'm carving the toenail, but I can't see it, so I reached for the print to check the toenail. Got sidetracked, put it back. Oh, it is strange. Now, look at that, I thought it was me. The first toe is clear, the second toe is clear, the third one is strange. Okay, I get a freehander, I can do what I want. As long as it looks like a toe.
because the traffic is so quiet out there. You can hear that air conditioner just roaring away, roaring away on its cycle. <laughs> toenails I read they weren't they weren't drawn well at, at the scale remember this was drawn as an Oban print first then shrunk to a postcard and now I'm bringing it back up in size uh, how much obsessive detail to look at here I don't know can't quite see what's going on here this
that the hot dog garbage truck? I didn't see it come by. The blue garbage truck, is that what it is? You guys can't see it. I can't see it either. It looks like toes, similar to toes. <laughs> if it goes wrong, do they get to wear socks? No, if it goes wrong, it's amputation. I can't cover things. So. <laughs> Was it a blue garbage truck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so. <laughs> Also, I see I've got the camera. The camera view outside is, is a little bit crooked this morning. I see that. And I, because it's raining, I pulled the camera back from the normal place where we put it out there. And, uh, and it's, uh, the legs are a bit crooked, so sorry about that. We've got a drunken view today here. What's the time? I should, I should have checked the time. Careful. What is it? 8.42. We're good to go still. No problem. Remind me around 9, uh, 9, 10, 9, 15, somewhere around there. The show and tell today, as I mentioned, it's the physically the largest object we've ever, uh, we've ever had here. And what it is, too, it's something that we will have in our flea market. And this is just going to have to sit and wait till the shop comes back alive, I guess. I know. It's a print, a woodblock print, a pair of woodblock prints that we already have in our collection. So I won't be keeping this one. We picked it up knowing that it would be of interest to, to some, at some point to one of the customers in the shop. But, uh, but sharpen here in a minute. Let me just get this toe finished and then we'll sharpen it before moving on to the next foot. Well, that reminds me too, the other day, somebody on the chat there was uh, asking about the outside camera, the audio on the outside camera. And I didn't follow much of the conversation during the time it was going on. I missed a whole bunch of it. But later on, when I was reading the thread, I, I read through the different comments that had been there. And it seems there was quite a difference of opinion. I know there were people or somebody or people who thought the audio outside should be turned off because it's uh, distracting and other people who felt it was good for the ambience. And I myself can't tell. I hear it through my ears, of course. And I, I can't really tell what's going out into, the, uh, out into the world. So that garbage truck now is obviously clearly not an interesting noise, interesting sound. So whether I should have that turned down more or, or just off, I don't know. So I'm still open to suggestions. And if I, if I feel the mood that people are in general are thinking, look, it's really not such a good idea, then uh, we can just turn it off. It's okay. Yeah. What I got from the comments the other day were that most people seemed to think it was okay. And uh, one or two people didn't, uh, didn't like it. So I don't know. Can't please everybody. Okay, that foot is cut. Can't test it just yet. And I need to sharpen this knife. I need to sharpen.
Yeah, yeah, I mean, the crows are nice. So it's fun. The garbage trucks are not so much fun. The crows are nice. Yeah, yeah. How do I know we need sharpening? Because it's because it's not sharp. I don't know. What can I say? I know. Actually, it is still really sharp. This is a really sharp blade. Actually, I w I would cut myself in an instant if I played with it here. It's not broken. It's just at the edge. Well, clearly, if we could see microscopically, we could see that the, the edge would have become rounded off or, or whatever. Touching it, I can't tell the difference. But when you're carving here, because we're carving at such a small scale, if there were rough and ragged edges here, it would, it, 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 it's just, it's dragging a bit. I don't know what to say. I'm not going to use the 400 stone. The shape of the blade is fine. I'm going to use the 100. It's basically just polishing almost, maybe. I don't know. It's the same as anything. If you were, if you were trying to cut a piece of paper with scissors or, or shaving or something, you know, what's the difference between a blade that's really sharp? When it's really sharp, it disappears. The blade's not there. It's just that you move something and a cut happens. When the thing is not sharp, there's a, you're aware of the knife much more often than... Uh... This is going to go really quickly because we don't need to take much metal off here. Glasses on, glasses off, glasses, nah. What's this picture somebody's posting? Dave, 21.5 years ago? What's, what's, what's the picture, John? 21 years ago. Oh, the end of the Poets series. Yeah, 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 okay. Ah, so so okay. What color my hair was? Same as everybody, not white. It's not white either to show. The hair is okay, it's this one that's gone. <laughs> Hair, I don't care what hair. It's just that it's there. That I get that all, all the time. The YouTube, just it's crazy. The YouTube, the, by the YouTube comments is not all about the hair, but there's lots of comments about the hair. <laughs> like I have any control over this? Not. How long should a man's hair be? Long enough to reach the sky. Oh, nice. I think we are nice. Just quickly get the bevel off. Hi. Ah, so kind of the street noise and I was, I was persuading, was I? So <laughs> The end of the Hundred Poets series, nay. So a million, million, million years ago. That picture, is that the picture with me sitting with, sitting like gesturing like this with all the, all the prints around me? Is that the one you're seeing there? That was a day, man, that was a day. It, God, uh, that's taken in the parking lot of our mansion. Mansion meaning, you know, Japanese we use the word mansion, our, our, our condominium building. We lived on the first floor. It was a four story condominium building. And I needed a place quickly. This was getting ready for the exhibition coming up and I needed a place to try and show, wow, a ton of prints and whatever. So we had the bright idea. <laughs> the bright idea of me and one of the ladies who was helping me with packing. Let's go do it in the parking lot. We could put the camera up on the fourth floor and shoot down. And we thought, well, what could go, <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> So my daughters were there. So they stood at the edge of the parking lot to the road, just sort of waving off people. Anybody's trying to come in the parking lot. They just sort of 
blah, 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 blah. We, th we figured we could do this all in like five or 10 minutes. Get ready, block off the parking lot. Get down there, spread the prints out. Dave jumps in the middle, gestures out. Ishikawa-san, not ishikawa what was her name? Ichi. Ichikawa-san, and I get confused with Ishikawa-san who works here. This was Ichikawa-san. The thing was, there was a little bit of wind. We wouldn't have done it on a really windy day, but there was a little bit of wind. And just I get ready and just enough wind to shoop, move one or two of the prints. I can't reach them anymore because I can't walk. So I've got to pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up prints, move the one that put it back, pick up, put it back, I sit down, a little bit of wind. My daughter says, someone's trying to get in the car. <laughs> it was absolute chaos. <laughs> and like the newspaper who wanted a picture is waiting for this, send me the picture right away, you know. And we had to take the picture, take it to the shop, put the film in, get developed. It was just, just. I did, I ended up spoiling it. You know, we had to, I stepped on a couple of the prints and whatever, and so. There's still, I've got the demonstration pack. It's the pack of prints. You know, I had the, the 100 set for exhibition, beautiful copies. We had the customer copies to go out. Then I kept the set for, for showing and demonstrations, and they ended up getting beat, 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 beat. And that set's still there. I've got that set back in Ome in a folder. And my footprints will still be on it from that day session. Little stones underneath, and Dave steps on top of it. It was worse, there was a car trying to get in and my daughter is just saying, just please hold for a minute. She says, Dad, I mean, just, just 20 more seconds. And she's holding, and the car's on the street trying to get by her, backed up behind this guy who's trying to get into our parking lot. So we're blocking the main road at this point. It was just whatever. But there's the picture, the picture that will live forever. Ooh, I think we are now okay. Yeah, the lab calling me. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been it? So <laughs> no, I can't, I can't say that that's what happened. I'm sorry. We got the pictures, and out they went, and it was it. That picture, man, I, the picture that went around the world, that's not true. But it went around Japan, I told you. Many, many, many newspapers used it. And when we, we used that picture for our, for our PR flyer for the exhibition, and more, it got results. I mean, we, we'd send it out to the, to the Yomiuri newspaper or whatever, and the next morning they phone, what's this? What's going on? Can we send a reporter? So yeah, it, I mean, it, it worked. Well, I mean, what worked was the, was the project, the, the work we had done. But yes, that, that photograph did its job, did its job. How long have I been in Japan? Uh, half of my life, sometime later this year. I think it's in a day in October. I will have been living in Japan for half of my life. I came here on a couple of visits before that. I moved here in 1986, July of 1986, when I was, what was I, 30, 34? 34, about to become 35, I was 34. I'm now 68, and I've been here for, since 1986. Living here since 1986. Where was I? What should we do next? Let's kill this boy. We've done his two feet. Let's do his hand. He's holding a scrub brush and he's brushing the uh, he's brushing the stone. We can zoom in again now, right? Well, the other one, he's done two. His his feet are done. His two feet are done. This guy, there's two more feet over here. Two more feet. Two more foots. Let's just stay in this boy. It doesn't much matter. Someone saying, well, this is the best thing on Twitch by far. I, whatever, it's a question of viewpoint. I don't think so, whatever, we have fun here. But uh, I see Twitch is in my news recently, lots on all trouble and they've canceled channels and people are doing different things, bad things. Hopefully none of that here. It's just me here. 
I have unpacked my suitcase. Yes, I know, my suitcase. <laughs> my suitcase has been unpacked. Sort of, actually, although it's funny you say it that way because I'm, in a way I am actually living, at the moment I'm living out of a suitcase. Uh, this is not my home. This is the shop we opened back in 2014. And my residence is a different place. I, my official house is over in Ome, an out suburb of Tokyo. And that's my legally registered residence, my taxable residence, and it's where my stuff is, such as stuff is, you know, books and clothes closet and, and whatever. But I spend 24 seven here in our Saksa shop. I, I crash in a room upstairs, just toss a, a bedding on the floor. So this isn't a home, so actually it's funny you say it that way, because I am indeed, at age 68, living uh, no, out of a suitcase. Except I don't have a suitcase, but uh, whatever. It seems to be one of those things that just doesn't bother me. I don't have a, a, a bed and a room and a living room and a couch and sit down and turn the light on and watch TV or whatever. I don't have any of those things, and uh, I don't know, just some reason that never seemed to be... Uh, Never seemed to be whatever, you know. It's a kind of curious question. I feel like a normal person. I'm normal, and yet normal people have like a house and a, and a kitchen and a, and, a, and a couch and a TV set. And, and, and for some reason, I don't, uh, I've never had those things, you know. I don't even have a clothes closet, you know. I have three, four, four of these blue shirts. One is dying, actually, you've noticed. I have four of these shirts. And they are on a rotation between hanging up on the clothes dryer, on my body, in the basket waiting to be washed. That's the only, that's the place my clothes live, is a rotation between those three places, you know. And the two pairs of jeans. The one up there now is hanging on the dryer where it was, where it was washed a week or so ago. And then I guess maybe next week, this pair of jeans goes in the washing. I'll wear that one, and this one goes on the drying rack and whatever. So, I don't know if it's, to me it seems like a totally normal life, but from outside it might seem bizarre. I really, really, really don't know how to see myself. Suitcase, ne? This is one sharp little blade right now. It's very nice. We're going to lose the tip of it in a minute or so. At the moment, the, the very tip of the blade is still there. It's still present. We're going to lose the tiny tip. I don't, I mean, it could, we could break like a millimeter or so, in which case we'd have to sharpen again. But anyway, we're going to lose the very edge of the tip any second now. And what I did to try and mitigate that a bit, perhaps you saw what I did. I should have explained it. You know, when it was on the sharpening stone, I sharpened first, I sharpened the bevel of the blade back and forth, flat, 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 like this. Then I flipped the blade over and I, I, I flattened again the back of the blade. And that left a, quote, perfect, unquote, edge all along the edge of it. But what I did, I should have stopped and talked about it, I took this knife and I lifted it up like this and I moved back and forth a few strokes on the sharpening stone. And what that did was that took this bevel a little bit this way. So the very tiniest point was gone. And I did that because if I had left that with this hard boxwood, the moment that the knife went ready, the moment that it went into the wood, that tip would have broken off. So by moving the angle back just like five degrees or something, the tiniest bit of metal at the top was gone. But it did leave a sharp point, but not quite as super delicate as the perfect perfect point would have been. And by doing that, that gives me a little bit longer before this thing breaks. But having said that, it still is really quite sharp, and this is really hard wood. 
I'm priming you for that moment when in a second this is probably going to break. Now, I think we have. Is this a mistake in the original? I don't know what to say here. They have put gray color on the brush, and the gray is all over his finger as well. Right? Is that meant he's supposed to have dirty fingers, or could be, you know, because there's no reason why if they can produce prints of this quality, there's no reason why they would have done that. But it's made it difficult for me now to see the finger. Okay, but that does come out this way for sure. How's that time? Show and tell, we're okay? There's so much chat today. Thank you very much. I can't see it. I will try at lunchtime to have a look at this, you know. I'm really sorry not to be able to, you know, I can't do both, obviously. I can't do both. So thanks for the comments and the conversation. Thank you very much. It's really nice to be, uh, to be part of this here. I guess it's growing. There's lots of names that I don't see, that I don't know, you know. More people and more new faces here. I sure hope this doesn't get too big, you know. I can't, I uh, know. I want to chat with my friends. I don't want a 10 million channel. My understanding, the whole stone is sumi. No, 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 no. Don't confuse two things. The ink stones are stones. They are physically stones, some kind of slate or whatever from a mountain in, in somewhere, whatever. And they've been carved and hacked into a shape, like sort of like you see here. So an ink stone is a slab of stone with a, a well, a shallow part shaped into it. And the well gets deeper and deeper and deeper at one end. And this is stone. It's not, it might be black, but it's nothing to do with the ink that's calligraphy. Then when a calligrapher comes along to do calligraphy, they take their piece of, of calligraphy ink, which is a stick, and they put water in the well and they rub their stick back and forth in the well, their black stick, and it makes black creamy ink in the well of the stone. You then dip your brush in it and away you do your writing. So the ink stone is not the ink. It's a stone in which, there'd be video, look up video, video, video. So these boys, or this boy, is just simply cleaning this one. Normally, I mean, whatever, the one with the sink stone we had at home, my wife used all the time for calligraphy. Just, you just rinse it off and you're way to go, or you just leave it sitting there, and you add more water and it just freshens it up again. Well, why specifically they would be scrubbing these, maybe there's been a, you know. Again, I'm not a calligrapher. I'm a left-handed person. I have never in my life practiced calligraphy here in Japan, except one NHK program. <laughs> we don't want to go there, but whatever. I'm not a calligrapher. I don't know how to do this. I, I know what this object is. I saw it happening in my home. My daughters tried it when they were school children, and uh, whatever. I, I know how it works, but by myself, I'm not a calligrapher in any way whatsoever. The left-handed thing is really, really a handicap. When I was a little boy in school, left-handedness, we had wet pens, you know, left-handedness was a handicap, but you plowed through it. In the Japanese-Chinese calligraphy, you actually can't do it left-handed and, and have nice-looking stuff. You can do artistic stuff. And it's because, whatever, I'm not the guy to explain this. With a right-handed person, they hit and draw and down, hit and draw and down, and that's the classical shape. 
With a lefty, he hits and pushes and goes down, and it distorts the whole brushstroke in a way that people think, like, what is this all about? And as a lefty, you can't hit and draw and go down because your characters would be a mirror image. So being a left-handed calligrapher here is a really a thing, and kids really, really struggle with this in the era when calligraphy was a thing in school. Do, 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 do. Yeah, they're just cleaning the stone, so. You're talking about the lefty thing, yes, yes, yes. Scissors, whatever, shirt buttons, whatever, door handles, whatever. I, I put the door handles here to suit myself in the shop. <laughs> but calligraphy is one thing where there is no compromise. There really is no compromise. Scissors and left-handed ball pens and whatever. Oh, time, time, time. Yeah, we're okay, give me five more minutes, another cut, another toe or something. No compromise. I got this, you know, back in, it, John showed you that picture of the finished series there. When I was still making that series, every print had calligraphy as part of it. There was a, you see the, the pictures there. There's a person, pur purportedly the poet, and then there is their poem. So Dave here had to learn to carve this calligraphy, even though he couldn't draw it himself. And what, there was a lady who taught calligraphy near me in, in our neighborhood, you know. Uh, our daughters went to her for a while for calligraphy lessons. And so when I would, before I would start carving each one of these things, it was vitally important that you make sure you understand how the, what they call the stroke order. Each kanji, each character, the character for number one has one stroke. Boom, that's it. The character for two has two strokes. One, two. But then complicated ones, the way they go. It might be seven, eight, nine, ten strokes. And there are standard stroke orders. And it's not just because old people made rules and young people should follow them. It is a sensible way to assemble that character. So there are rules, quote, unquote, rules that are customs, that are traditions, that are just part of how it's done. So the old calligraphy I was replicating on these prints, I would look it up in a dictionary and sometimes they weren't there because it was old calligraphy that was archaic and no longer in a dictionary. But before I could carve it, I did need to know how would that have been drawn? What was the stroke order? Because if I got that wrong when I was carving it, people who saw my finished print, people who understood the calligraphy would see, ah, he doesn't get it, look at that, he screwed it up. It would be sort of like if we, if we replicated A, B, C, D, and you got the B backwards or something like this. You know, you'd think he's dyslexic or whatever, you know. So anyway, the point being, before I could start the carving, I had to make sure I understood the character. It's like this. I'm carving toes, but I need to know what a toe is supposed to look like. If I have a distorted impression of what a toe should be, what has he done? What's this guy done? He doesn't get this, you know. So anyway, long story short, I go to this woman each month. She knew I was coming. It was just a deal. She helped me do this. And she would, oh, yeah, look at that. I haven't seen that one in years. And she would sometimes get her dictionary out. And she'd do her thing with the finger in the air like calligraphers do. And she'd think and say, no, no, that's not that. It's not this. She'd get her book out. Da, da, da. Oh, there it is. There it is. I've got it. And she would take a pencil then and show me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'd say, are you sure? And she'd say, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> we had great fun. And in the early days when we were doing this, I, did, I didn't pay for this. She's just a neighborhood lady. She was, she was just happy to help me with this and make sure this dude, this silly foreigner, make, happy to make sure I got it right. But in the early days, she said, Dave, look, I mean, I'm not trying to promote my business, but sign on and become a student here. You know, you're carving this calligraphy. You should know how to do this, you know. And I said, well, unfortunately, I, before you make me that suggestion, I should let you know that I'm a lefty. And she says... Oh, and that was it, game over. And a one idea would have been for me to try it with my right hand. And if I had been, you know, school age kid or younger or whatever, yeah, it might have made sense. But at my age, starting to use my right hand for something like that, I mean, whatever, it's just, it's a no, it's a no non-starter, you know. Nice lady, I don't, she, she must be gone now. She was a little bit elderly then. This is 1990, 1989 and 1990 to show. That's 30 years ago, and she would have been 
Well, she'll still be around. She was in her 50s or 60s, so she might still be there. Probably still there, still teaching, now that I think about it. Hmm, this needs sharpening too. Okay, we must be getting close to a show and tell time, I think, right? Somewhere on there, you guys are probably yelling. Do I see black marks over there, S&T? Let me finish this corner. Okay, for the show and tell, as I said, I know I'm not going to be able to sit here at the desk and chat with you while I show this. So what I will do is, I'm going to tell you first what it is. You can do some research and look it up. You meaning <laughs> John or whatever. <laughs> And then I'm going to walk over there. I'm going to move the camera. So here's what's happening. We're going to have a look at the show and tell today. Here's what it is. It is a pair of screens. They're woodblock prints, of course, the woodblock prints. They're a pair of screens. And the theme is the Japanese thunder god and the wind god, Fujin Daijin. And they're a pair of screens that's made in the 19, 1980s, maybe 1984, 1986, by the Yu Yu Do Company. Carvers and printers, names to come a bit later. So you can start looking it up now. Bio, it's a kind of, well, no, they, it, the original things were painted on Biobu back in the 14s or whenever it was done. This pair of woodblock prints, they are mounted, actually, I'm not sure. They might be mounted as a pair of folded screens, which I will stand up on the floor, or they might be mounted one by one in a humongous frame. So I'm not sure what I'm going to see when I open this up. But you can start looking it up. Fujin Daijin, the thunder god, wind god, the gods that are, of course, at Kami Narimon here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up now, move the camera to point to the place on the floor. I'm going to go down there and open this thing up and blah, 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 blah. And maybe you can hear my voice or not. I don't know. Set it up. And then I'll come back here behind the camera. We can then zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom. All set? I'll see you again in a few minutes. Mic is going to have to come off because my mic cable does not run all the way down there. You guys can take yourself for a few minutes. Step one, unplug mic. Step two, move the camera. And here is our shop. Actually, I should also get rid of the outside. Just a minute here, too. One sec. Let me get rid of the outside view. You can see our shop, what a mess. It's cardboard boxes, you know, we're still here.
Okay, good to go. There's the scene of the crime. Oh, they're separate. It's frames. It's not the Bilbo version. It's frames. It's two frames. One, two. It's, this was a limited edition back in the 80s. This is set 112, it says. Are we still up and running? Are we okay? No disasters? Hi. It's washing.
This one is the uh, Thunder God. Those are his drums all around him. This is a famous design. It's Ogata Korin to show from, I don't even know, 1600s. I'm sorry, I don't know the time. And his partner, the Wind God. This is Hu Jin, Hu Wind, with his big bag of wind. And these are woodblock prints, but they're done in imitation of the painting style. They haven't cut flat ukiyo-e type colors here, of course. You can see in the white area here, there's all these gray patches. This is the condition of the painting at the time they made this reproduction. So they've done it as a reproduction of a painting, not as an ukiyo-e print. This has nothing to do with ukiyo-e at all. But this is woodblock. It's cut and printed on pieces of wood. I have no idea how many impressions. Hundreds, for sure. We have a set of this upstairs, but there's no specific documentation with it. And actually, I know the guy, Saiki-san. I know the guy who published this. This is the guy, the same publisher who did the Genji series that we've seen, you know, with those famous four Genji prints by Okada Yoshio. This is the same publisher that made those. This is some years later. Those Genji prints were done in the 1970s. This pair of prints would have been made, as I said, maybe if I was going to pin it down, 1984, 85, 86, somewhere around there in the bubble time. And what can I say? I know in a Japanese home, these now are next to useless. I mean, nobody has wall space that big. You saw the scale of the thing. I don't know the actual size of these, but you can, you can see the scale. So these are really not so much useful in a Japanese home, but in some larger Western environment. Oh my God, what's the documentation? Okay, cover is Matsuda-san. This is in Kyoto, carving in, in Kyoto. And printed by Endo. And it says, out of 300 copies, this is copy number 112. I had been afraid there might be some mold and stuff on here, but it seems I think we're okay from what I can see so far. I think they should come out of those frames, though, because they've been in that frame now for nearly 40 years, more than 40 years. So they should come out of those frames. Oh, I see. I've got my stuff in the way here. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, well, I've got this in the way. Sorry about that. There we go. Oops. Oh, I didn't know we could do that. Look at that. Oh. So there we have it, 1984, so I'm not quite sure what to do with them now. I'm thinking, one, for safety reasons, these have been in these frames. The bags have a moldy smell. The bags need washing. I'm thinking that these have to come out of these frames, because almost certainly if we leave them in there, there's real danger of mold and fox. No, these are woodblock printed. These are not paintings at all. The original was a painting which looked like this. See the square grid shape? There's sort of a square grid in the background. Think of that as being four inches or so in size. And that was the gold leaf that was plastered all over the original screen. A gold leaf screen with gold leaf in the bottom. So, no, this is the grid in the background. This is the, this is the gold leaf squares on the original screens. Then Cording, or whatever, who, who it's still, they argue about that, Cording painted this. And this woodblock reproduction is to reproduce the whole concept of a painting. So they shrunk it down. And what you see, what originally would have been four inch squares, are now, what is it, 1.2 something? A little bit over an inch square, not quite two inches in square. Uh, the, mat color, the mat is not a mat, it's fabric. So the, the brown color of the mat we're seeing is the fabric color. I don't see from the front of it any massive mold or, damp or, or, or stuff, but they have got to come out of there, absolutely. So I'm thinking that what we will do is pull them out of there first, air them out, and look at the condition of the frames, and maybe we will just toss the frames in boxes. They are not useful for anybody, and we will flatten the prints carefully and make those available. And if anybody wants to get them, they will have to do their own framing somewhere else. I don't know. I don't know. I'll hold back on throwing it away until I see the condition. If the mats and stuff inside are okay, maybe what we'll do is keep the wooden frame and glass. I don't know, but they have to come out of there. They have to come out of there. Yeah.
Yeah, so, so we say matte bird on the prints. I don't think these have been hung up. That's the thing. So there's probably no matte bird. Prints like this were bought by a collector. They get them. You can see the deal. There's storage boxes, storage fabric, storage everything. So almost certainly these have been just sitting in somebody's house for the past whatever it is, 30, 35, 36 years. So once we get a good chance, we'll look at the condition, we'll figure out what to do, and they will go in our flea market sometime, whatever, a month, a month from now. Have we seen the reproductions of the Korean? Yeah, the big way to win. Yu Yudo also, it, uh, I'm not so sure, it was Tan Seisha or Yu Yudo. They didn't do the whole screen, they took parts of it. They took a, a clip, a mental clip of the thing, and they made a reproduction of that. How would I display them? For us ourselves, we've got a set upstairs in our collection. We've got them in map, 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 map cases, large, flat map cases. We want to preserve our prints and keep them. I don't want to put a print on the wall and just see the same thing every day, every day, every day, every day. So we ourselves don't display our own print collection. It's all stored away, we bring it out to look at it and put it away. But something like this, obviously, people are thinking about it as a decoration thing in a frame up on the wall. But to do that means you're, you're setting the clock ticking on the life of the thing. No idea. Mats will burn the prints, if not on the best said so we'll have to open this up and take a look. The, the map burn, I don't know, this, whatever, what we call map burn is two things. One is part of the print is protected from sunshine, part gets the sunshine so it fades. So when you take the mat off, you'll see brighter original colors in the part that was protected by the map. And the other way around, if the mat itself is not good material, it can damage the print. So when you take the mat off, that part's been damaged rather than preserved. So with mats, it can go either way. People casually use the word mat bird for either way. No idea. Anyway, it costs us a bit more than I had wanted to pay, but uh, I think if we can verify that the condition is good, <coughs> at some point they will find a nice home, probably somewhere in the west, a giant, beautiful living room with these two massive things. Okay, I gotta get out of here. For me now, Saturday and Sunday, this is all now going to be bank reconciliation. The reconciling our normal banks are okay, but PayPal. We have four uh, massive PayPal accounts with 30,000 transactions. And it's all going to be reconciled before Tuesday. We have a meeting with the accountant on Tuesday. And there's not a thousand problems with it, but there are a lot of problems to find. And finding them is not going to be so much fun. So my, I am now going to take off my uh, woodblock carving glasses, and I'm going to put on my accountant's glasses. And I am now an accountant for the next two days. No, I'm a bookkeeper, actually. I'm a bookkeeper for the next two days. We'll be back here Monday morning. You know what we're going to be doing? It's going to be carving on these little boys and their feet. This, the key block, actually, is not too far from being done. We've got the faces, and then we'll do the usual thing. We'll prepare color separations and go for it, and move along from there. I will very much enjoy reading the uh, chat when I get to it at lunchtime. For now, thanks very much. I'll see you again. Those of you who want to come back, I'll see you again Monday morning. Bye for now. Thanks again.